recommend as you study, especially if you're visual like me, look at those colors, it's gonna help you be able to distinguish the different parts. Because even though we have a small vertebrae, here I'm holding a nice typical vertebrae, very small piece here, but there's a lot of parts to each individual vertebrae. So, what are our two main parts? We have the body and the vertebral arch. Body, vertebral arch. Now the picture you're looking at on that screen is this view right here. If you have a vertebrae in front of you, you can turn it like so, with the little spinous process pointed down. That's the view you're looking at right there. Body's at the top, that's the anterior portion. Vertebral body is where I'm pointing right here. This is not the vertebral body, it's the spinous process. The little point, little tail. This is the vertebral body right here. That's the posterior portion. In other words, it sits in my body like so. Body faces forward. Vertebral body and spinous process points to the back. That's what you can feel on your back if you're poking your spine right now, those spinous processes. Now, the two parts, they enclose a space right here in the middle. That's that big hole you see. That's the vertebral foramen. And what's important about that vertebral foramen? That is where your spinal cord goes down. So if you look on those big spinal columns on your desk, you might not be able to see very clearly, but that little um, yellow portion is a spinal cord. You can see it going through the spine. That is going through all the vertebral foramen. Much to people's um, amazement, it's actually kind of surprising how people actually put the spinal cords inside the body. It's not actually inside the body of the vertebrae. It's actually in that hole between both portions. Huh? It is. That's why those spinal surgeries are so delicate. There's not much protecting it, really. It's just enclosed in those little vertebrae. What did you say this is? It was mostly which. This is mostly um, representative of T spine vertebrae. That's what you have the most of. You have 12 of them. So, the articulation of all those foramina going from the C spine all the way down to the L spine, that's going to be what we call the vertebral canal. Individually, vertebral foramen, all linked together like a bunch of Legos, vertebral canal. And that's what the spinal cord flows down. Making sense? We good so far? Let's look at these pieces individually now. We're going to label all these. We're going to talk about what we're going to do all definitions and go forward. But before we go to the next slide, let's just look at what we're looking at here. Anterior portion, the yellow, that's the body. That's going to look like a big square on the radiograph, by the way. When you're doing like an AP to lateral, you've probably have seen it on some of your spine x-rays in clinic. It looks like squares or rectangles. So we go down. We have a connection point. That's a big one right there. When I say the registry loves to ask about pedicles, they have a very close relationship with pedicles. They love them. What is a pedicle? Well, a pedicle is basically the connection point of the body to the transverse processes on each vertebrae. If you look at your little thing right here, the little vertebrae, you can see it right here where I'm putting my fingers. There's that little connection point where it's narrowing. That's your pedicles. That's your pedicles. It connects the body to those transverse processes going out to the side. And that's what we see right there. Now, that should sound familiar. We just talked about some transverse processes, did we not? How, how, when, when, when did we talk about those? What were we saying about transverse processes? That's well, not the head of the ribs. That's where the tubercle of the ribs connects on each trans. Um, each tube. Each T vertebrae. Each thoracic vertebrae. Too many T words here. Each thoracic vertebrae. Now, one thing, one way you can remember that, guys, is how I always remember transverse process. You know, you'll most often see a vertebrae in that view, which is what we call an axial view. You're looking down at it. What's the shape of it? It's kind of like a T, right? It's going to the side. It kind of looks like a T. T for transverse processes or processes. And as we go down more posterior, we have another connection point. We have what's called the lamina. Now, the lamina is another connection area that's connecting the transverse processes to the spinous process all the way on the back. So we have two big connection points. We have the pedicles and we have the lamina. Pedicles connect body to the transverse process. Lamina, right. the red area, connects the transverse process to the spinous process. There's that vertebral arch area once again, and then the spinous process is that point on the back, the very back of each vertebrae. Now down here we have a side view. This is what if, as if you were looking at a lateral spine image. There's your body once again, making that nice, beautiful, square, rectangular shape. There's our transverse processes, which are now superimposed. 
Here is our spinous process, which looks a lot larger from the side. But we have a few other things to make note of. We have like two little, we have like two pairs of feet on each vertebrae. If you look at your little vertebrae that you have, it looks like two little spikes on top and two little spikes on the bottom. Kind of like ears on top and feet on the bottom. You'll see that? That's our superior articular processes on top, inferior articular processes on the bottom. These are going to be very important. Each comes in pairs. As you begin connecting vertebrae together, that's what connects together to form each union of the vertebrae. The superior articular process will fit with the inferior articular process of the vertebrae above it. Now see what I'm talking about? They kind of fit together like Legos. Just like that. If you have two, you can do what I'm doing. Does it, does it fit on the articular process or in the knot? They fit on the articular processes. They, they're, they're facets. They join together. Now, each of those unions of those articular processes are going to form a specific joint. Y'all ready for this one? Called the zygopophyseal joints. Or like your Z joints. That's, huh? Z joints. Or Z joints. I can't say that. They won't say Z joints. They say zygopophyseal. Yeah. So, so the superior articular processes and the inferior articular processes. So imagine this vertebrae is coming down. The inferior articular process oh, backwards here. The inferior articular processes of this one are going to connect the superior of this vertebrae, join together to form a zygopophyseal joint. We're going to we're going to show. I'm going to show you more examples of this. Is that what pops? Like when you go. That's what we're releasing air when you pop your back. Yes, those joints. Z Y G A P O P H Y S E A L. Oh, look at you go, yes. I'm I am. Oh, you're reading it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to be impressed. But yes, yes. Now, there's another thing that we're going to mention that you just said the notch, vertebral notch. Now, as these vertebrae connect, those notches are also going to come together and form what we call a intervertebral foramen. So each intervertebral foramen is formed by two vertebrae coming together, making like a circular shape. And I'm going to show you, or I'm going to show you some more pictures of them all joined together. You'll see what I'm talking about. That's just a little overview for now of all the stuff you got to make note of. So I told you it's getting more complicated, right? The lamina is the connection of the transverse process to the spinous process. It's, like a, it's just bridging the gap, so to speak. Let's define some of these terms, guys. So <laughs> this is the stuff we just talked about. Each particular arch is going to be formed by our two pedicles and two laminae. They do come in pairs as well. <clears throat> then we have the four articular processes, two transverse processes, and one spinous process. It's on each individual typical vertebrae. Now for your typical or T vertebrae, those spinous processes are going to be more short, have a double pointed, what we call bifid tip, and I'll show you what that looks like moving forward. And they're gonna be slightly posterior and inferior in the way they lie in the body. In other words, they're gonna point semi downward at an angle like this. If you hold your vertebrae up, you can see it going in that downward direction. The spinous processes kind of go down, backwards and downward, posteriorly and inferiorly. Above, are you referring to the arch or the two pieces? It's talking about to the above support. It's talking about it's, so it's backward. It's saying all this is supported by okay. four particular processes, two transverse and one spinous. By the way, in this picture, when you're looking down at it, these facets here, that's this area you're seeing right here. That's that connection point of those articular processes. You're looking down at it right here. So the facet is just the, the facet? Facet's just basically where the joints connect. Okay. And they come together. Because that's also where the zygopophyseal So when they're together, they form the zygopophyseal joint. So it's just by itself. It's just a facet. It's a facet. Yes. Good observation. And once again, if you look on those spinal columns on your desk, you can kind of see those zygopophyseal joints as those vertebrae come together. Especially if you look at the middle where the T-spine is, you can see how they're connected together. It's a lot like little Lego blocks. The spine's like a big Lego block column. Do you human anatomy? 
fascinating. I was amazed by this earlier. Like how big it is? Or? Yeah. Well, you gotta have some support when you're sitting down. Mm -hmm. Doesn't it look like a? Those aren't all Harry Potter students. Yeah, so this is this way. <laughs> it's like a bunch of Harry Potter students coming in. I still haven't figured that out. I'm still curious to know. Bakit means two. Yes. Is it this way? Correct. Okay. Yes. Hello, welcome Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, and Slytherin. Yes. Honestly, yeah, where do they go? They just I run into a wall? Yeah, if anyone finds out before you, please let me know, because I've been curious too. I just know they take out all the tables and stuff that space. It's some kind of, they get that cheap uh, I'm sure it's some kind of internship thing they're doing, observation. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's move on, guys. So, pedicles may project from the posterior part of the body to that connection point, once again. The bottom of it is concave. It comes from the vertebral notches which will in turn form an intervertebral foramina as all the vertebrae come together. And like I said, articulation of those notches will form each individual intervertebral foramina. And as we move forward, we're gonna learn that we gotta label those in pairs as well. So each intervertebral foramen, foramen is gonna consist of two vertebrae. What am I talking about? If we look at your spinal column on this side here again, you got these little nerves going through from the spinal cord. Those little holes the nerves are poking out of, that's an intervertebral foramen that's formed by two vertebrae coming together, making one circle. So this would be where I'm pointing right here. This would be the intervertebral foramen of T1 and T2, and so on as you move down. So that's where the labeling is going to get more complicated because we have to label everything in pairs on the, on the vertebral column. Where I'm pointing right here, that's a foramen. That's the intervertebral foramen. It's formed by two notches of two vertebrae coming together to make a circle. So if we were labeling this right here, where I put my finger, that's the intervertebral foramen of T1 and T2, because both form the one opening. <coughs> so see how it's gonna get more complicated? Can you feel that? You can. Big, looks like a big hole. Oh, you yeah, have to say it's a hole. Yeah. Yes. Um, does everyone usually include on the image um, exam for the... Um, more complicated, but we're taking baby steps. So let me divide this chapter into two parts as well. So the laminae, they also pro project posteriorly and medially from the pedicles, and once again, they're that area that's connecting the transverse processes to the spinous process. So the other, so the other part Right on top, where those little ears are on top. Yeah. That's going to be the zygopophyseal joint. So they have, I want to say like two little holes that lock it in place. And grab that spine there if you want to see closer. So would it be like a magnet? Like you say how they both uh, come and sit on each other? Is it like a magnet? Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, they don't they don't attract, they mainly. Like a puzzle. They yeah. Like a puzzle where I always say it's like Legos. They connect here like Legos. You see it, Charlie? Mm -hmm. How they're connecting? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Didn't realize that, huh? Mm -hmm. That's a spy. Imagine mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I would not want that job. <laughs> and you said lumbar, you know, thoracic has 12. Thoracic mm has -hmm. 12, mm -hmm. so lumbar has 5, mm -hmm. circle has 7. This is what you so. see in the holes. Because it's like a really gradual change into the lumbar, and then it's uh -huh. a completely different shape. Kind of looks like fins on the back. Mm -hmm. Stegosaurus fins is what I always think looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there a mm -hmm. way to tell? So I know there's a difference between like the vertebrae and the lumbar, but is there a way to tell? They look a little different. They look a little different. See? Oh, from like the top to the bottom? Yeah, just that's a great point. That's a very great point. So Reagan asks, if you're looking at your 12 T vertebrae, because there's so many, can you tell based on number which one specifically it is? 
Okay. You can make a good estimate. Okay. If they were all separated, you're probably going to get a few wrong because some are almost exactly the same. But if you look on your spines again, look at how the two vertebrae change from the ones closest to C to the ones closest to L. The ones closest to C res uh, resemble more of a C vertebrae, versus the ones closest to L start to resemble the L vertebrae. So you can at least kind of say, well, this one's closer to the C, so this is probably like one through five, one through four. This one looks like an L vertebrae, so it's probably about you know seven through twelve. So you get a good guesstimation, so to speak. And plus, which one it is. And plus your L spine. The uh, body's going to be thicker, a lot thicker, yes. Compared to the but, T spine. But once again, look on those spines. Look at how they start to resemble each other as they get closer to the uh, corresponding vertebrae. Right? I have a. Yes. So, where is that the, from the beginning? I remember the spine of the Lawrence was at. Yeah, from the beginning, it goes. But this narrow, example made it look like the spine goes all the way through. It does. That's not accurate. Well, you know where it is, Jay? This is nerves. Yeah, this is like the nerves actually go all the way down, but the cord itself ends at L1. So, it should be a different color or something? It probably should be, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Okay, so Sindhu's actually the one that pointed that out. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. 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 Yeah, that's Let's talk about the transverse processes. Are the things jutting out from side to side laterally? <coughs> they project laterally. They have a T shape. It makes that rear look like a T. They're a little bit posterior from the junction of the laminae and the pedicles. And then that spinous process. It's projecting posterior and inferior, which means it goes backwards and downwards slightly from the junction of both laminae. And then one condition that we're going to talk more about on the next chapter it's called spina bifida. Have y'all heard of spina bifida before? Yes, I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has anyone ever seen spina bifida? Not in person. So you'll see it a lot on pediatrics in particular. It's a birth defect. When the laminae fail to fuse, which is right here, imagine this is all open right here. So this is out. What do you think is going to happen? The, the, spinal cord cord is the spinal cord is going to herniate outwards. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you'll see babies will be laying prone and their spinal cord will be exposed out of their back because they're more the spinal cord herniating out of the body. That's spina bifida. It is fixable. They can fuse up together, especially as a baby, because the bones are malleable still. But very serious conditions, you can imagine, it can cause a lot of damage, nerve damage. Do they still the Do what? Do they still suffer with any type of issues after they have it? It depends on how fast they fix it and how, how severe the herniation is. As you can imagine, if there's a um, herniation in the womb, and whether they're doing a C-section or natural birth, there's a chance of that cord being damaged as the baby's being taken out. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, always some things that can go wrong and happen, but it is a very fixable condition. And then they can walk normal? It just it depends. It depends on how quickly they fix it and if there was any damage in the process. Your know, nerves, they control so many different things, and um, so you just don't know until Basically, it's just like a big gap there, and they'll artificially mm. make something or they'll fuse. If there's enough, they'll fuse it together. Oh, okay. Yeah. It just depends on the degree of the severity of um, each patient. Do, like, do babies and little kids have that mm -hmm. mental process? So they, they do not because they haven't fused yet. So you'll notice on a baby's spine, it looks like all the vertebrae just kind of float in space. Mm -hmm. That's because all the cartilage is in it connecting it. Has it ossified yet? It's kind of cute. See the little transverse processes floating on the side, and the little body in the middle floating, mm -hmm. little spinous process poking out. It's all like just floating in space. Mm -hmm. like, it's kind of funny looking. Does that happen when you feel when they start walking? No, it's just just development. It's like how their hands fuse. Everything starts fusing. 
All right, let's talk about those articular processes of which we have four once again, two superior, two inferior. That's that connection point from each of those joints between the vertebrae. They arise from the junction of the pedicles and the laminae. Like I said, two superior, two inferior per vertebrae, by the way. Every vertebrae has four articular processes from C down to L. They articulate with the vertebrae above and below, and they form those wonderful, and that's my favorite word to this, this chapter, zygopophyseal joints. Zygopophyseal joints, also oh. called, I'm sorry, Shemeika, it's also called an interarticular facet joint, not a Z joint. But no. I, like, I like saying Z is a lot easier. <laughs> but don't put Z on your test. Oh, it's only multiple choice, I can't. And that's true. I used to make people write this stuff out. He's put a lot of Z words in there. Yes. Yeah, he gonna put that. I can put you in there. Yes. So looking on your vertebrae right here, the two superior are here, the two inferior down here. And as they link together, those joints come together and make a zygopossal joint between each of the vertebrae. Now that's a great kid's name, Zygopophyseal. You want them to, to sound like a scholar or a philosopher? Come here, little Zygopophyseal. Come here. This is my son, Zygopophyseal Donahue. He is going to be a future physicist. Like, man, that's pretty convincing, right? Z-pop. 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 Yeah. That's when he's a rapper. That's when he's going through his rapper phase. I like that even better, yeah. So you get a question? Sir, when you say four articular processes, <laughs> the, which four do you, can you please point out the yep. four? Here's two here, oh. here's two here. They're superimposed in this picture, but if you look at your vertebrae on the table, look at this, easier to see. Now this is a L, this is a L spine vertebrae, but here's the two superior, here's the two inferior. As you link them together, they join together to make zygopophyseals between each vertebrae. Yeah. Z pop, I like that. Mm -hmm. So zygopophyseal and interarticular, those are synonymous. So the zygopophyseal is the union of the superior to the inferior particular processes. Mm -hmm. And they come together. What's the facet? Yeah. That's just the opening where they connect. So there's the process, there's the opening where they connect together. Yes? So this is the superior and, and inferior that forms the... Correct. So okay. make sure you write that down. I, if, I, I don't think I said that. Each zygopoxyl is formed by the union of the superior to the inferior particular process. You're never going to have two superior connecting or two inferior connecting. Each one's connected by superior and inferior. They're always in pairs, so there's two zygopophyseal joints, left and right. So yes. the only places that the, the two vertebrae articulate is on those joints and in the body? So no, or? so between the bodies, we haven't discussed that yet, are intervertebral discs. That's cushioning. Mm -hmm. The actual connection point is at the articular processes. Oh, okay, so not a joint. It's a zygopophyseal joint. So, I'm about in between the body. Mm -hmm. so it's called an intervertebral disc space. So something else. It's something Not else. It's a disc space where the actual disc fits in there, kind of a little pillow, a little cushion between your vertebrae. I think people say, or oh, have a slip disc. They, do that. That they is say that all the time. Mm -hmm. And you kind of see it on the expert too. It's a herniated oh. nucleus pulposus, correct? Ah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sometimes on an X-ray you can, but more so that's going to be an MRI exam. Mm -hmm. MRIs are going to be the gold star modality for anything to do with herniations of the disc, spinal cord injuries, because MRIs focus on tissues, whereas x-rays focus on bones. Well, CT kind of bridges the gap between the two a little bit, and CT is still more bones than tissues. Plus you get barbecue on the CT. CT is barbecue, they Radiation. charge you a, a ton of money for it too. All right, so your summary of a typical vertebrae, guys. The one body, two pedicles, two laminae, two transverse processes, one spinous process, and four articular processes. I should say processes, plural. So let's, let's go through it together on our vertebrae. If you have a vertebrae with you, one body. One body. One body. Yeah, yeah. Two 
This way. Uh -oh. Two pedicles. Two pedicles around my fingers. Wait, Two pedicles that's connecting the body to the transverse process. It's a little, it's like a little neck, that little connection between the body to the transverse process. Y'all see it? Mm -hmm. So it's like right here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. See that little yeah. necks, the two little necks? Yeah. yeah. That's the pedicles. You're pointing to it. Yep. Okay. Moving down, you got two laminae. Two laminae right here. Two laminae. Side to side, two transverse processes, making that T shape. One spinous process. And if we look at the top and bottom, two superior articular processes, two inferior articular processes for a total of four. Okay. Follow me so far? Yes. yes. So the pedicles are connecting the... The pedicles are basically connecting the body the to body the transverse process. But the pedicles are not connecting to the arch. I mean, they bridge off of it, but it's more of a bridge. It's a connection point oh. between those two portions of the vertebrae. Yeah. So the laminate is considered two, not one? I yeah. There's two, two laminate. That's why it's called spina bifida. Is it? Both of the laminae don't fuse, right? Correct. So, like, these are going to be on imagery, right? Yes, they will. Because okay, so one thing, uh, like, when I tell y'all the registry loves spine, they will give you a picture of a vertebrae that's just like this. They'll give you a side view like this, they'll give you a view like this, and they'll have just an arrow pointing to one part of that vertebrae. So, it won't necessarily just be an x ray. They don't give you a model labeling on this, too. They love spinal stuff. So, are you going to ask? So when it comes to right and left on a vertebrae, no. I won't say like right, if we're just looking at it like this. I'll have an arrow to one of them, you'll tell me what it is. So I wouldn't say, you know, put, well, if I, if I had a hot spot, I said put it on the lamina, you'd have that whole range. Yeah. If I said pedicles, you'd have both that you could label. I won't say right and left. But if it's an x-ray, it changes. X-ray, we can see the right and left more clear. We'll get to that, so we get to the actual x-ray images. So just keep that in mind. <laughs> that was easy? Yeah. I'm sorry to say it's about to get more complex because we're going to the sea bird break. All right, let's talk about these nasty things here. As you can see, that bird break looks vastly different than what we just talked about. Kind of looks like, as my last class pointed out, if you look at it like this, it looks like Sid the Sloth. Yeah. Uh, it does. does anyone see Sid the Sloth? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. See the eyes, the mouth? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're the <laughs> So these are our cervical vertebrae. Now, when I say cervical vertebrae, I'm referring to the vertebrae from three to seven. Three to seven. Why? Because C1 and C2 are going to look very different as well. You said three yes. to seven is what? And we're saying just a typical cervical vertebrae, which we see oh. here. We're talking about three through seven. Now, how many cervical vertebrae do we have in total? We have seven. seven. That occupies our neck region. What are, what are our, what are our, should I say this correctly? Three, two, what was I saying? The unique ones. Know. The first and second are different. I lost what our unique features of a C vertebrae. The transverse foramina are going to be located on the transverse processes, which you see right here and here. That's the eyes of Sid the Sloth. And we are going to have a bifurcated spinous process like this. It's not going to be one piece like you saw in the typical. It's going to be two little tails, so to speak. Maybe it's like, you know, Sid's goatee. Maybe it's like a little goatee from on his chin there. So let's look at these parts individual, guys. Some of y'all might, uh, if you have a C vertebrae on the table, follow along, share with somebody. It's going to look like this. C2, right? That's um, C1. C1. Anyone has one of these, follow along. Let's start from the top. There is a body, just like the other vertebrae. That's that square portion we see right here. They look very different. Transverse processes still go side to side, but look how much shorter they are. Kind of like eyebrows for the eye holes here. That helps me when I sit with the face. There's your transverse processes. Inside each transverse process, we have two transverse foramina. 
That's for our arteries and veins to pass through. In particular, what important arteries or veins do we have in our neck that we travel through there? Jugular, carotid. Jugular and our carotids. Jugular and carotids. We have facets. This will be our articular processes like we just talked about. Superior articular process, side to side. In the middle, we still have a vertebral foramen. That's where the spinal cord travels through. Moving downward, I'm sorry, I missed one. We still have a pedicle. Still, there's a pedicle connecting the body to the transverse process. We still have lamina. Two of them connecting the transverse process area to the spinous process. Looks a little different, but still does the same thing as we just talked about. And then at the very bottom, it bifurcates into two pieces. That's what we're going to call the bifid tips or spinous process. You can use both terms, either spinous process or bifid tips for C vertebrae because they bifurcate. Whereas the typical that we just looked at has just one piece, one spinous process. Spinous process or bifid tips. Oh. Use either term. Side to side, same thing, guys. Looks like a bit of a mangled mess when you look at it from the side. Here's the front, there's the body. Transverse processes are superimposed. You can still make out that foramen right there, by the way. We have the notch. Once again, it's going to help form our intervertebral, intervertebral foramen as each vertebrae comes together. We have articular pillar which is this portion we see right here. That's going to be different from what we just talked about. It's going to be unique to our C vertebrae, the articular pillar, the side portion. Not to be confused with the transverse process, which actually comes off the sides of the body on this one. Do you see the difference there? Spinous, um, I'm sorry, the C vertebrae, the transverse process comes off the body in the front. Right behind that's what we call an articular pillar. That's this portion we're seeing right here, by the way. There's the lamina, spinous process, or by the tips. And then just like the other vertebrae, there's the superior articular process and the inferior. They come together to, find, to form those zygopopacil joints once again. You follow me so far? Mm -hmm. This is where it gets a little more complicated. These, are, these C vertebrae are a lot more difficult in my opinion. Jay, you go first with your question. Um, so you said that the facets were on the super articular pillar, or the? The facets are found on each articular process, superior and oh. inferior. Okay. You can see it better on the superior, especially when you're looking down at it, but there's also facets underneath as well. Mm -hmm. Do you have questions? Um, you, uh, last one where you said it's only three to seven, I thought it was one to seven. So when I say three to seven, guys, I'm okay. talking about this shape of vertebrae. Okay. Okay. Three through seven share this shape. Mm -hmm. One and two are going to look different, mm -hmm. as we're about to see. <laughs> C1 and C2 looks different from the rest of the C vertebrae. Do the atlas and the most or almost all of the C vertebrae look like that? Three through seven look like this. One and two look different. Question two. You say six. Hmm? It says six. So is it three to six or? Six like what? The typical cervical vertebrae? Okay, so, okay, oh, I don't like saying that. So three through seven is to share the shape, but as you get to C7, it's gonna more closely resemble a T vertebrae because you're starting to invert the T vertebrae. So are you gonna be specific? Like, I'll be very specific, okay. yes. I'll be very specific. Don't have any guesses. So Three through six are typical vertebrae. According to your book, three through six. According to your book, uh, let me correct that because I learned three through seven. According to Merrill's, three through six is your typical C vertebrae. The reason seven is not, even though it's still a C vertebrae, is because it's going to more closely resemble the T spine because we're becoming the T spine as that vertebral prominence that we palpate. So C seven is going to look more close to a T vertebrae as opposed to a C. Three through six are gonna look like this. One and two are gonna be unique as well. They're gonna look like two little spaceships. You'll see what I mean. They're gonna look like two little UFOs. They do. I think they look like elephants. <laughs> like elephants. Yeah, like what they say here. Oh yeah, the bottom one? Oh yeah, that's the that's the nose. Okay. Just keep in mind, if you're going to use the elephant analogy, make sure you notice the back side, not the yeah. front. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I like the Sibisloth, though. I, yeah, I, that one's pretty good. Well, the bottom one is the head of the elephant. The elephant's a little bit better. Oh. See, I learn something new every, every year, someone gives me a different analogy on these bones, so that's good. I've never heard that one before. It does look like an elephant. All right, so we're going to talk about C1 and C2 coming up next, guys. So the first two, very important because they have 
the wonderful alternate names that we've come to love with every chapter. C1 and C2, C1 is also called Atlas, C2 is called Axis. Does anybody know why C1 is called Atlas? I have a little cheat sheet for you. Because the head does some. Why do we call C1 Atlas? Does anybody know Greek mythology? Yes. Right, so in Greek mythology, Atlas, as we see here, is holding the world up on his shoulders. So what's C1 do? Holds your head on top of your body. That's why it's called the Atlas. C2 is called Axis, and C7 is also what we call vertebral prominence. We'll talk about that one as well. And that's what's going to join the C-spine and the T-spine. Why does it say C7 is also a typical? It's basically a fancy way of saying that it's going to look more like a T-spine vertebrae. Because mm -hmm. it's the connection point where it's becoming T-spine. We should all be very familiar with C7. Why? So probably Tell you when to do our chest x-rays, remember? <coughs> Way back, many moons ago, when y'all were x-ray babies. What? Oh, yeah. There you go. I said I heard you. kind of sounds pretty much like I was born. Yeah, I was. You were too. No, I wasn't. 1999? I'm from Chicago. Oh, are you really? Uh, 2000. <laughs> 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 All right, guys. Let's talk about these weird ones now. C1 and C2. Now, this is the ones that get people the most because they're still fast. Let's see. I need a C1. Asshole. So, I'm a C1. I think you got a C1. Yeah. We're going with this. Now, to me, unless you've got something better, I always thought they look like, like little UFOs. C1 and C2 kind of like a UFO to me. But as you can see, it is vastly different than what we've looked at before. It is unique. This is what's going to hold that skull on top of your body so it can fall off. When we talk about internal decapitations where the vertebrae are separated and the head's dangling, it's just because it's become dislodged from C1 in particular. From C1. So, let's look at our parts. What does it consist of? We have an interior arch and a posterior arch that's unique to the C1 and C2 vertebrae. Two lateral masses and two transverse processes, which are a little easier to see on that diagram. C1 is unique in that it has no vertebral body. If you look at them side by side, these vertebrae, there is no body on C1. Now, the superior articular processes of C1 are very special because they are what are going to receive the condyles of the occipital bone. Where's the occipital bone? Right back of your head. That's the skull. That's the back of your skull. So those condyles of the occipital bone will sit on top of those two condyles of C1. That's what's holding your head all together. At least I hope it's still holding together for you. All this info is probably becoming dislodged, right? <laughs> the transverse processes of the atlas are going to be longer than the others in the C vertebrae are more pronounced from side to side, as you can see. So going through our anatomy, like we just said, guys, make note once again, there is no body. And there's a specific reason why there isn't a body. Why? Because of this thing right here. Y'all heard the odontoid process and dens by now, I assume from clinic. The dens of C2 projects upward into C1. So the body is missing so they can link together. It's like a little key going into a keyhole. That's how I always compare it. <coughs> Now, we have the interior arch that's on the front. That's the area arching here in the, on the top. When you see ligaments, don't worry about ligaments, by the way. Let's just want to remember it when you go into MRI. You'll learn everything you want to know about ligaments in the MRI. But for now, you don't have to worry about them. We have our superior articular process. That's where the occipital bone of the skull fits on top of C1. Our two transverse processes on each side. Our transverse foramina are on the transverse processes, which is unique once again to our C vertebrae. On the back side or the bottom, we have that posterior arch coming down here. Does anybody have anything besides a spaceship for that? Continue to look at the spaceship. It looks like, you know, those, what are those flat? Yeah, those flat sea animals. Like a Stingray. Stingray. 
to flounder. Yeah, definitely. Trying to see that a little bit. Let's break it down again, guys. Anterior arch on top. Transverse processes on the side. The foramina right here, transverse foramina, side by side. On the bottom, we have the posterior arch. And in the middle, we have that vertebral foramen still. Now, let me show you how they link together, because this is C2, which we're going to look at in just a second. Why is there? Wow. I just killed my patient. <laughs> Why is there no body? Because when they fit together, you'll see this protrusion, that's the dens. They link together like so. It's like a key going into a lock. It's like the key that's keeping your neck together. So that's why we always check for the dens on these open mouth views. We're not doing it just because you want to see down your throat and see your teeth. We're checking the integrity of the dens because what would happen if I fracture the dens? It's gonna become dislodged and what's gonna happen, my head's gonna fall off. Mm -hmm. or more internally decapitate, which yeah, is a very serious that's injury that's because what's also going to happen, imagine where the spinal cord is, watch what happens. Here, it's going to separate the spinal cord. That would probably kill you. Is there a way to survive Very rarely. It'd be a vegetable. It'd be a vegetable, yes. So it's a lot going into a key. That's why it's designed like that. And is that why it also can move like it? gives you that flexibility, yes. Are these synovial? I was about to <laughs> we'll get to that. We'll get to that. All right, let's look at the axis. Or C2. Huh? Can we go back? Oh, my big head's in the way. I never said that. You said that, so. You said the occipital bone fits here. The occipital bone fits on top of C1. And that foot links C1 to our skull. So it's kind of amazing to think, guys, you, know, you think your big old heads with your brains in it, there's not much holding it on top of your body. Just two little joints. It's kind of crazy, right? And you can see it on your models, by the way, guys. They have skull caps. That's the occipital bone on top. That's all that's attaching your skull to the rest of your body. Right there. Kind of nuts, right? Just imagine someone with a big water head. Yeah. A, big, a big water head? Well, yeah, like that's a... Like, the hydrocephaly? Yeah, that's like the like, actual condition? Well, no, no, no. Just somebody that's normal and they just got a big water head. You know, a big head. head. Like, that's a lot of... That's because they've acquired so much knowledge. Your head expands as you get smaller. You're talking about Jimmy Neutron? Jimmy Neutron? Oh, right, let's, uh, let's hit C2, like guys, then we'll go on break. Let's hit C2, then we'll go on break. So... The big one on C2, guys, we have the dens of the odontoid process protruding on the very top of it. Can't miss it. We have a specialized view just for that protrusion. The odontoid is received into that anterior ring of C1, thus why it does not have a body. And each side is going to have superior articular processes to link those two bones together. So we see here and here. That's one form of the zygopopacil joint, just like the rest of the vertebrae. Laminae of the axis are going to be very broad and thick in comparison to the others. And the spinous process is actually going to be horizontal in shape. Horizontal in shape. So, and I need to make note of, uh, by the way, this one definitely was like a spaceship to me. Y'all remember Independence Day, the little UFOs? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. That's what that looks like to me. We're looking at it from the front. The two articular processes, superior articular processes, inferior on the bottom. We do have a body on C2. C2 is the C1 is the only vertebrae that does not have a body, so that the odontoid process can fit up into it. And we have a spinous process in the back. Spinous process in the back. Yes. So I'm going to show you again. The odontoid, your C1, so that fits together. The odontoid process is like the little key moving them together. The little. Can I see them? Yeah, I'll pass this around so you can see what I'm talking about. But the laminae are going to be in the same spot, guys. If you look at it from this angle, laminae are connecting right here. This is referring to. Right here. I'll pass this around so y'all can see how it connects. It's kind of cool to play with. If you're a nerd like me. There you go. 
And as y'all finish writing, guys, y'all go ahead and take your first break. There's been a lot of info coming at you. We'll start looking at some actual x-rays. So go ahead and take, this Friday, take 15 minutes. Come oh, on, wow. 9, 16. I got a quick question. Yes. On the uh, battle of six o'clock that I hit. Yeah. Um, I need you to look at it, because I might not understand what I'm saying. Oh, what's up? Um, you yeah, had said earlier something about body. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what you said. You said something about like the body. So I was saying that the transverse processes are superimposed on the body. For okay, on the Instead of on the typical, they're separate. Okay, gotcha. Uh -huh. I don't know. 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 I don't I don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't I don't know. I don't know. I Is there any cups here? No, right? There should be the solo cups. But uh, carefully, people might think you're walking around with something else. <laughs> Remember that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, I do. 